Burberry is a high-end fashion house based in the UK. The company's iconic trench coat and cashmere scarves, patterned in its signature tartan, are associated with wealth and luxury. But its founder, who was an apprentice in a curtain shop, actually made its clothes for everyday workers. They were so well made that British soldiers packed along its coats as they left home to serve in the First World War. As the soldiers wore the coats while guarding and crawling through the muddy trenches, the coat became more than just an accessory. It turned out to be a lifesaver for hundreds of thousands of soldiers. This is the story of Burberry and how they conquered the world. Burberry's story goes all the way back to 1835 in England. In Brockham Green, Surrey, Thomas Burberry was born to Elizabeth and Thomas Burberry. His father made a living as a farmer and grocer. As a young man, Thomas worked as an apprentice at a local draper's shop. It was here that he learned about tailoring clothes and fabrics. At age 21, Thomas opened his own small clothing shop. His store, Burberry and Sons, was in Basingstoke, Hampshire. Basingstoke was a small town with a population of only 4,500 people. When Thomas wasn't at his shop, he spent a lot of time outdoors, fishing, riding horses, shooting, and farming. Because of this, he understood the needs of the local farmers and grocers who were his customers. Eventually, Thomas decided to sell everyday clothing that was suitable and durable for their work. As his business grew, so did his family. Thomas married a woman named Catherine Newman, and it wasn't long until the two welcomed children. Thanks to this video sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you test out colognes and perfumes from over 600 brands in one click. Go through a simple questionnaire on Scentbird's website to find new fragrances that fit your personal style and get to try out luxury scents that speak to you. Scentbird carries brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of Rebel. This month, we received Luna Andromeda from Tiziani Terenzi. It's a beautiful but reserved scent which combines notes of coffee, Turkish rose, and acacia honey from the Mediterranean, which is subtle but persistent. We got F Mondays from Confessions of a Rebel, which smells fruity and energetic, boosting your mood to get rid of the Monday blues. Lastly, we received Percival by Parfum de Marly, a classic fragrance combining bergamot and mandarin with a flowery blend of lavender and jasmine, perfect for a date night. With Scentbird, you get a 30-day supply for only $17 to test out fragrances. It's amazing to get to try something new without committing to a full-size bottle that could cost hundreds of dollars. With our Scentbird discount, you can try out designer fragrances for just a little over $7. Use our promo code HOOK to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Two years later, Thomas was able to hire over a dozen employees and open a factory on New Street. He intended to develop a new style of outer garment. The Macintosh raincoat was the popular style at the time. Made out of rubber, the Macintosh was inflexible and smothering, with no ventilation. Thomas wanted to make a fashionable coat that would keep people cool in the heat and warm in the cold something for long outdoor sessions. One of his inspirations was his doctor, who liked the idea of a coat that was resistant to wind and rain, but would have natural ventilation to be breathable. Another one of Thomas's inspirations was the local farmers that shopped at his store. Thomas paid careful attention to their clothes and noticed they wore linen schmocks that had a waxy substance on them. After chatting with one of the farmers, Thomas discovered that when they dipped sheep, their schmocks absorbed a grease secreted by the animal skin glands. The grease was a crude form of lanolin, a yellow-colored, waxy substance that protected sheep's skin and wool from the effects of sun, wind, and rain, and had waterproofing properties. Drawing on his inspirations, 
Thomas developed a secret process for making a mixed textured, tightly woven fabric using linen, wool, Egyptian cotton, and lanolin. The result was a light, breathable fabric that was durable and resistant to tearing, wind, and rain. He called his new fabric gabardine and patented it. Soon after, Thomas created five different styles of gabardine of different weights. They had names like Airy Light, Double Weave, and Tropical. He sold these fashionable raincoats in his store to huge success. Enjoying this story so far? Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get more fascinating stories about today's biggest companies. Thomas was a clever businessman. He advertised Burberry garments as designed by sportsmen for sportsmen and drew in a lot of business. Gabardine became so popular that it helped Burberry expand across the country and into fashion clothing. Given the demand, it wasn't long until Burberry had hundreds of employees. Many of them were young, unmarried women. At the flagship store in Basingstoke, 25 of the women also lived above the store. Up until tragedy struck and the woman and Thomas almost lost everything. One day, a shop assistant knocked over a gas lamp by mistake and fabric materials nearby caught on fire. The flames spread fast throughout the building and the workers and shoppers evacuated. When the firefighters arrived, more bad luck struck. They struggled to get any water out of the hydrants. When they finally got them to work, hardly any water came through due to low water pressure. Desperate, they used buckets of water to try and save the store, but the fire grew so big that it spread to two neighboring shops. Soon after, the roof of the Burberry building collapsed. Other fire brigades arrived after a while and laid down a series of pipes to pump enough water to put out the fire. Unfortunately, by then, Burberry had suffered massive losses. The accident caused 30,000 pounds of damage, but thankfully, Nobody was badly hurt. To keep business running, Thomas moved into a shop across the street while the old one was being renovated. After nearly two years, the shop was ready and was larger and more modern. By then, Burberry's resilient gabardine fabric became a huge hit from its functionality. The company's weatherproof coats even became the garment of choice for British military officers. So many of them bought Burberry coats to equip themselves that the military took notice and commissioned Burberry to design uniforms. Thomas then developed garments for both the army and the navy. He designed a knee-length, khaki-colored raincoat made of gabardine. It became part of every officer's official kit. Over the following years, Thomas continued to improve the design and eventually patented it as the tie lock and coat style. Around this time, Thomas also brought his sons, Thomas Newman and Arthur Michael, into the business. And while the two would help with selling tie lock and coat style, it would be a different relationship that would catapult Burberry to new heights. As Burberry expanded its range of outerwear, it offered hats, jackets, and pants made for hunting, fishing, and mountain climbing. Each product was breathable, light, and trendy, but also tough, weatherproof, and durable. This made them the perfect outdoor clothing of choice for pilots, balloonists, and even explorers. Dr. Fritjof Nansen was the first recorded explorer to take Burberry Gabardine to the Arctic Circle. In the following decade, others would follow with Burberry overalls and tents, including Roald Amundsen, who was the first to reach the South Pole, Robert Falcon Scott, who was second to reach the South Pole, and Ernest Shackleton, who led the Trans-Antarctic Expedition. Soon after, Burberry found itself being sought for bigger and more risky journeys. When Great Britain entered World War I, 
Burberry was again put to work by the military. The company was tasked with designing raincoats for the British Royal Air Force and Royal Marines. In the past, the official British military wore great coats, long, heavy coats made of wool. These did not hold up well in the trenches since they soaked up mud, leading to soldiers having to cut away the fabric when it weighed them down. The British military later began to wear the Macintosh coat since it was great at keeping water out. But like great coats, it had its drawbacks, including keeping sweat in. To create something better, Thomas improved on the tie lock and coat to make it more functional. The coat included shoulder pieces to show an officer's rank, a gun flap by the chest for extra protection, and a storm shield that ensured water would run down without trouble. It also had D-rings on the belt of the coat so that soldiers could easily hang maps and other gear. Along with the new features, the coat came in a subdued color, khaki, to allow for better camouflage as opposed to something bright like older military clothing. These clothing were deliberately bright so that people would recognize which side soldiers were fighting for. In fact, many troops wore colors that were reminiscent of their flag and felt that it was honorable. That changed when they realized it made them easy targets and it was more important to be invisible. More than half a million English troops wore the new and improved tie lock and coat while fighting in the trenches during World War I, resulting in it being named the Burberry Trench Coat. Burberry and competitor Aqua Scutum took credit for inventing the concept of the trench coat, but it was later revealed that it was first developed 100 years before World War I through the Macintosh coat, made by Charles Macintosh, the inventor of waterproof fabric, and Thomas Hancock, the inventor of the rubber masticator machine. Still, away from the battles, civilian men and women back home were buying up the coat, Many saw it as a way of showing support for the soldiers, while others simply found it fashionable as the fitted look became more popular, including high society. Britain's King Edward VII took a strong liking to the Burberry trench coat and would famously ask his employees, Fetch me my Burberry. Following his reign, King George V also took notice of Burberry's craftsmanship and granted the company its first royal warrant as a tailor. In the following decades, Hollywood also began to love the Burberry trench coat. Famous actors would wear the coat on the silver and small screens, including Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca and Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Audrey and other stars like Marilyn Monroe, Bridget Bardot, and Bette Davis also sported the coat off screen. Burberry's creation was now being seen as timeless. But unfortunately, the company that had come so far would soon leave the family's hands forever. After Thomas passed away, his sons Thomas Newman and Arthur took over the business. However, when retiring, they decided to sell the company to Great Universal Stores, one of the leading retailers in the UK. Over the following decades, Burberry achieved many more milestones, including receiving a second royal warrant as a weatherproofer and becoming the official outfitter for the British Women's Olympic team. And finally, 100 years after its founding, one in every five coats exported from Britain was Burberry. It seemed like the company had achieved almost everything it could. But another iconic Burberry image was about to capture the public. Forty years before, Burberry created a Scottish-inspired tartan pattern for its coat linings. The check pattern featured a beige base with red, black, and white stripes. Though it was only on the inside of the coats, the lining was a recognizable Burberry feature. But the way the check pattern was thrust into the spotlight was totally unplanned. One day, Jacqueline Dillemann, a retail buyer for Burberry's Paris location, was preparing a window display. She decided to include a splash of color and turned up the hem of a coat to show off the check pattern. 
Jacqueline then took the check lining out of another coat and used it to cover luggage and an umbrella. Customers loved it, and soon after, there was a strong demand for the check umbrella accessory. Burberry was quick to produce and sell hundreds of umbrellas and seized the opportunity to offer another accessory with a check design, a cashmere scarf. The scarf was an instant hit, particularly among the British upper class, and eventually became a status symbol. In the following years, Burberry products became all the rage. Exports to the US and Japan increased so much that they made up two thirds of the company's sales. But in spite of Burberry's growth, it had yet to appeal to a sought after demographic young, fashionable women. Since the early days, many thought of a men's trench coat when they thought of Burberry. Making it difficult for the company to appeal to its new target demographic. In an effort to change that, Burberry launched a new women's line that consisted of casual instead of career wear and priced pieces at 15 to 30% less than their other lines. Burberry then began to license its trademarks to other manufacturers. This meant the Burberry name, check pattern, and logo could appear on other products. Displaying these trademarks added flair and prestige to items like handbags, belts, pillows, perfumes, and alcohol. Within just a few years, sales in Burberry's women's department rocketed. It grew by 30% and helped the company double its income from 41 million to 70 million pounds. During the late 90s and 2000s, Burberry struggled with its space in the luxury brands market and being viewed as exclusive due to their choices in licensing, but in the 2010s made a huge comeback thanks to their efforts in limiting their use of the classic checkered pattern and their online presence. Burberry was quicker than other luxury brands to leverage the digital space and social media. They were one of the first luxury brands to sell online worldwide and to use Facebook. The company even had more followers on both Facebook and Twitter than any other luxury brand. Today, Burberry is a luxury fashion house widely known for its outerwear, leather goods, footwear, accessories, eyewear, fragrances, and cosmetics. However, Burberry's heritage trench coats and check scarves continue to be seen as timeless classics. Helping the company become the ninth most valuable luxury brand in the world and bring in billions in revenue annually. This is the story of how a 21 year old draper's apprentice invented a groundbreaking fabric and created an iconic coat and company that would conquer the fashion world. For more interesting stories about today's most successful companies, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Remember, use our code HOOK to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird and try out new amazing fragrances today.